Thank you for watching, and remember to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for your support. Lover, this is what we're used to seeing this time of the year. Flakes. But right now, looking a lot different, isn't it? In fact, it's looking like this. We've got dry, clear conditions. We've got blue skies. I mean, it's beautiful, right? But it's been a long time since we've had measurable snow. In fact, you have to go all the way back to April 21st when we had 2.6 inches of snow that covered the ground. So that is a long stretch and Denver is not alone. It's not the only place without any snowfall so far this season. We've got a look at the current snow cover map and talk about these conditions for Denver. So I mentioned April 21st. That's the last time we had snow. Typically, our first snowfall would occur on October 18th. Uh, the latest snow that we've ever had in the season uh, has occurred on uh, the 21st of November. That happened in 1934. So we have exceeded that already. We have gone past that date by about 10 days overall. So we are getting close to a record on that one. Now, over the past 16 years, Denver has averaged 9.2 inches of snow during meteorological fall. That's September. October and November, but we've had a trace so far this season. So maybe you saw a couple of flakes or flurries out there. Just no stickage, nothing measurable. The above average temperature is certainly not helping with the lack of precipitation. The Weather Channel's Justin Michaels is joining us live from Denver right now to talk a little bit more about this snow drought. Um, first of all, Justin, you know, with the lack of snow there, how would you compare what Denver looks like? Maybe another city first today, and that's the first day of meteorological winter. Winter. Did you know the records that we keep for climate and weather are different than astronomical winter, which still is about three weeks or so away? And we have had almost zero winter, so it feels. In fact, there's been no storms that have been major across the eastern half of the country. A lot of the action has been happening across parts of the west, but the northeast has also gotten in on some snowfall. So when we look at the snow cover across the lower 48, only 10% of the U.S. has some snow that remains on the ground. If we compare that to last year, it's pretty close to being about the same. But two years ago in 2019, we had about 40% of the lower 48 with snow cover. And a lot of that was into the western part of the country. So it really tells you that we've been warm, we've been somewhat moisture starved, and winter, even though it technically it arrives today, it's hard to be found. Chris? Four weeks have really been driving across the northern tier of the U.S., closer towards the U.S.-Canadian border. So let's see what the models are doing right now with this system as we head into the weekend. And this is the Euro that we'll start you out with. That's our last little clipper that moves out. But this is the one that we really want to focus in on, which is really more of a Pacific storm. And Pacific storms tend to be warmer than continental storms that come on through uh, from the north. Now, one of the things we're looking at here on the Euro model is that it is showing a very tightly wound area of of low pressure. Uh, so that shows us that this is likely going to be a windy uh, type of a storm. And notice all the snow breaking out on the north side of all of this. High pressure in place across parts of the east. If we're going to get a good snow coming into here, I'd like to see that high pressure a little farther on up towards the north. All right, so that's what the Euro is doing. This is the GFS. So the GFS brings the low into a similar position on Sunday morning, but a little farther south. But it also brings in a lot more warm air coming in here. So you're seeing a lot more green on the map. Now, typically where we get that rain snow line, maybe 50 miles or so to the north of that can often be where we get our heaviest snow. So that could put places like northern Wisconsin in the zone for some heavier snowfall amounts, which I know would bring a lot of snowmobilers um, some joy. So the Euro then moving forward from Sunday into your Monday really brings a huge wind event with this, bringing the rain up ahead of it and some of that snow back behind it. So there's our low on Monday with the Euro. GFS brings it much the winds farther. have been gusting anywhere between 60 to as much as 106 miles per hour has been clocked in Montana today. So when we've got several large wildfires that are out there burning right now, and in addition to that, we've got the dry fuels and the gusty winds. It's not a good combination where we do have uh, fire weather concerns that are continuing. We've got the drought, which remains in effect across most of the state of Montana with exceptional drought, including you here in a great fall. So that fire 
fire developed just down towards your south and west where the evacuations occurred. Still waiting to hear from officials how many acres, but we do know that some structures did burn down. We just don't know how many. Wind gusts in Great Falls have made it up to 62 miles per hour today. Still getting frequent gusts, 40 plus. So we do have a lot of alerts in effect for the windy conditions. We've had tractor trailers blow over again on Interstate 15 today. So this is another one of those days where we just have those brutal, brutal winds and the fire danger is so elevated because of the combination of all those factors. Winds are going to stay pretty good and pretty strong, I think, into this evening. And then they're still going to stay gusty, but not as bad. I think we'll pass the peak of the worst of the winds as we head towards tomorrow morning. Kevin, exactly. all time highs for the month of December. Bozeman, that could happen um, for you today as well. So very little in terms of snowfall across so much of the country. So what are typical years uh, looking like in years past? We'll take you back to 2018 on this exact day, the first day of winter, December 1st, and we had 34.1% of snow cover. So you can see there was a fair amount across the upper Midwest, some into the Northeast, as well as into many of the Western states, including the Colorado Rockies and into the Sierra. December of 2019, 41% snow cover. That was a great year in terms of getting the snowpack up into the higher elevations and then melting off in the spring months to help fill up the reservoirs. But the mega drought really started developing here the last two years. So we look at December of 2020, only 13% of snow cover. And today we're talking 10%. That's the third lowest since we've been tracking this since.